The mouse and keyboard versus controller debate ends today. Well, at least for one game. This debate is more commonly known as aim assist is broken versus you have your whole arm and we only have a thumb. The never ending argument that dominates the shooting game genre, especially in FPS games and specifically for today in Call of Duty Warzone 2. Now why just Warzone and not multiplayer as well? Because the time to kill in multiplayer is already way too low and while we we're doing some tests for this video using Modern Warfare custom lobbies, we noticed that the aim assist is way weaker than it is in Warzone. Now to make this comparison possible, we'll split it into a few categories. Movement, gun skills and mechanics, the adaptability, consistency and skill ceiling for each input, and finally, a few important points that must be mentioned but don't have any specific category. So are you team controller or MNK? Comment down below, I'm trying to see something here. Starting off with the definition of aim assist. Aim Assist is a software developed for controllers to counter the advantage that mouse players have, which is to instantly go from one direction to the other. As for controllers, you have to go to the center where there's no input for any form of movement or aim, and then go in the way you want, which is going to be a little bit of a delay and a disadvantage. So software like Aim Assist must exist. I'm a mouse and keyboard player and I say that. As for rotational Aim Assist... Well, rotational aim assist is basically aim assist on steroids and with super glue. But unlike aim assist, which is activated by shooting or aiming, rotational aim assist is only activated through a movement input. So whether you are actually moving on your controller and you're moving your spot in game, or you're strafing into a wall and you're not physically moving, as long as there's a movement input from your controller, rotational aim assist will kick in. And now for movement. Movement on both inputs is generally the same, where having a higher sense will award the player with a snappier movement and faster reflexes. As you can see in this clip here, this is my friend on 2020 sense on controller, and this is me on mouse and keyboard on a very high sense as well. And we're both able to go right and left, right and left the whole time, making ourselves a very hard target or going to cover really easily. But since mouse and keyboard players can always snap into a direction where even on controller, you're going to have to turn a bit, mouse and keyboard takes a point. A massive thank you and shout out to Hexsmith and NX. Hexsmith, without your testing and without your fact proving, I don't think Call of Duty would have such amazing data as we have right now. So thank you for providing the footage and the feedback. As for NX, well, thank you for being a crack controller player that provided important feedback that changed a few things in this video, as well as a few spicy clips that shows you the true power of aim assist if you practice correctly. And now we got door plays. Door plays are probably one of the most important things that you need to master, not just to win your own v1s, break the enemy's line of sight, and win more fights. This is one of the most important things if you're gonna be in a building fighting a 1v2, a 1v3, or even 1v4. Now for this topic, I was gonna give it a tie, because most of the times it's one or two doors, and having a medium to high sense will give you the ability to just close both doors at the same time, whether you're mouse and keyboard or controller. But I pulled this clip off, so I'm gonna play it twice. The first time at regular speed, and the second time in slow motion, and we'll go from there. So as you can see, I managed to close four doors by snapping basically in an instance. With that being said, this is not possible on controller, so another point towards mouse and keyboard. A dedicated prone button. I generally feel sad for controller players and why do they still have to suffer with this shit. Like, it's 2023, you get a controller with up to four buttons on the back, there's no excuse that keyboard players have way more buttons now, we don't use that much buttons by the way. Controllers can have the same benefit. And with that being said, for some reason, you can't have a dedicated prone button, which means a lot of movement is going to be slower, drop shots are going to be harder to execute or slower, and that's going to get you killed, especially in high level lobbies. So another point towards MNK, so far MNK is looking like the better input to play Warzone, so what do you guys think? Do you think controller is going to be better at the end, or MNK is actually way better and just people refuse to admit it? Comment down below before the video ends, and let's see what, if you're right or wrong. Quality of life and loot management. This is where MNK wins, and it's not even close between them and controllers. Because controller players must go through items one item at a time and keep moving till they get what they want. As for MNK players, they can instantly move their mouse, click it wherever they want. Now, that doesn't sound like a very important advantage, but especially in Warzone 2 where we have backpack and loot management, which is an actual skill gap, Using buy stations or backpacks properly now is going to take more time for controller players, whereas for mouse and keyboard players, they can instantly just snap and do whatever they want. One point for MNK. Can aim assist be broken with movement? Sadly, no. In Warzone 1, it was possible. But after doing some tests in multiplayer, and keep in mind, aim assist in multi is way weaker than Warzone, 
aim assist yeah can be broken but rotational aim assist will track you easily and this is with barely giving any input or trying to track the target imagine if the player is actually trying to track it and get the kill this is the first point that's gonna go for controller players now for the gun skills and mechanics now before i head into warzone 2 i want to mention something that we all totally forgot about or never even thought about in warzone 1 the input balance in warzone 1 was perfect because if you think about it at long range generally speaking mouse and keyboard players were able to perform better than controller players and it was the opposite in close range where controller players were generally able to perform better with aim assist but just because it was like that that doesn't mean that controller players can't perform good at long range and mouse and keyboard players can't perform good at close range both inputs could practice well enough so that they perform greatly at both long and close range that was the perfect balance that we had and nobody thought about it like that but that was warzone 1 sadly in warzone 2 long range engagements are a thing of the past and when I say long range engagements, I'm talking Warzone 1 long range. Right now, it's not even close. In Warzone 2 and how the weapons are behaving, most fights are at 50, 60, maybe, maybe 70 meters. At that range, aim assist can easily be activated if you're good enough with it. Add to that the visual recall that MNK players have to deal with. As for controller players, not as much because aim assist is still working at that range. And now you have a controller dominated long range fight. So one point for controllers. As for close range, it's actually even worse and it's a nightmare for mouse and keyboard players. First of all, you got the visual clutter that makes it impossible to shoot with iron sights and sometimes even red dots. Now that is also annoying for controller players but you can actually aim without seeing your enemy and no i'm not kidding watch this clip So one point for controllers, single and burst fire weapons. Single fire weapons like the SO14 and the Lockman 7.62 battle rifles have one of the best time to kills at medium and long range. And in the SMG like the Lockman Shroud is already the best but its only problem is it comes in burst fire and can be even stronger if you switch it to single fire. Now when it comes to single and burst weapons, both inputs will struggle aiming and tracking at the same time. Now for mouse and keyboard players it's going to be annoying because we have to use the same hand for both aiming and recovering the recoil as well as clicking non-stop so that shaking will affect our aim and hence make it harder for us to use this weapon but that nature doesn't apply in the same way to controller players because first of all their trigger finger is separated from their aim finger second of all they have rotational aim assist which does most of the job for them so in this case controllers take a huge huge point because they're able to use high tier high damage weapons in a much easier way Early game pistols. Having a successful start and landing safely with all your squad alive after you wipe the area is really important. And for that, you will need some luck like finding some good loot, or if you don't have anything, you have to be really good with your pistol. Now pistols have two problems. The first one is the visual clutter, even when you're using the X12. And the second problem is the visual kick that you can't see anything when using the basilisk. And just like the single and burst fire weapons that we mentioned before, pistols are all single fired, and plus the visual clutter, controllers will take the advantage here because with aim assist on and rotational aim assist, they're always going to have the early game advantage. And now let's talk about tracking. Personally, this is going to hit hard for both inputs. So guys, please take your emotions out just for a couple of minutes and only keep an objective mindset here because everything that's going to be said right now is nothing but pure data and actual facts. No opinions from my side. In close range fights, the time to kill is at its lowest. So you have to do two important things. Hit all your shots as well as make the enemy miss as many shots as possible. And this is where strafing comes into play. Strafing is basically going from right to left at random intervals to make the enemy confused and miss a couple of shots and making them readjust their aim. And for controller players, that's even more important because that activates rotational aim assist. Oh my god! When a controller player is strafing, He's gonna make the MNK player miss a few shots because of the randomness that he's doing. And the MNK player has to actively see that information, acknowledge it, and react to it. But when a mouse and keyboard player is strafing in front of a controller player, every time the mouse and keyboard player tries to act smart and instantly change directions, aim assist or rotational aim assist will kick in instantly with it. There is a reason why some mouse and keyboard players are saying this is literal aimbot at close range because it's doing instant reactions. As for MNK players, they still have to actively see things and react to it. One point for controller. Horizontal and vertical recoil control. When selecting attachments and memorizing the recoil pattern of each gun, mouse and keyboard players must work on two aspects. 
where they can put one attachment that negates most of the vertical or horizontal recoil and just work more on the other one that hasn't been negated. Or they can put an attachment that does a little bit of both, but at a lesser rate. Both ways, they have to pull both vertically and horizontally according to the pattern of the weapon they're using. As for controller players, rotational aim assist will negate most of the horizontal recoil because first of all, you're strafing, which helps with that. And second of all, rotational aim assist is kicking in, leaving it easy to only focus on the vertical recoil where you can just put an attachment for that only. That's why you'll see most controller builds are focused on vertical recoil, while mouse or keyboard players have a different build that needs a little bit of both. So basically on controller, all you have to do is pull your thumb down. And before anybody says that this is a thumb problem, we only have our thumb. That has nothing to do with thumbs, hands, arms, elbows, or armpits. All you have to do is pull down at a certain speed and a certain rate, the same way you have to pull your whole hand down at a certain speed and a certain rate depending on the weapon. If you're complaining about having your only your thumb, when all you have to do is just pull down because everything else is taken care of, then you have a skill issue and you don't want to admit it, or you're just a bad boy demon fan, I'm guessing. You are probably on TikTok right now searching for the best zero recoil gun, and then you cry about it when somebody with a stronger gun kills you, although it has a little bit more recoil. Pull down. Not that hard. Aim assist versus stun, flash, and smoke grenades. So for mouse and keyboard player, a stun makes you stunned and you have to like move your hand a million times to move barely on the screen. As for controller players, this is while they're stunned. This is while they're flashed. And this is while there's smoke. One point for controllers. And now for flicks. If you post a clip of yourself and you flick, then you are 100% cheating in Call of Duty. Now, although this is a basic FPS skill and it's pretty normal in games like Valorant and CSGO, in Call of Duty, it's cheating. It's possible on both inputs, but for controllers, you have to be on really high sense and it's gonna come with a lot of difficulties. Maybe that's not your comfort zone. And you still have to go from right to left. So one point for MNK. And now for adaptability, consistency, and the skill ceiling for each input. Now, both inputs, if they're still new and they don't know anything about anything, they're gonna get used to the button layouts and what to press and when to press it. That's gonna be normal for both, so there's no need to compare. But after an hour or two and sometimes less, a controller player will get used to how to use aim assist and rotational aim assist. And off the rip, he's gonna have an advantage that if you wanna copy on mouse and keyboard, it's gonna take a very long time to master the arts of tracking and strafing with it and getting used to that same performance that aim assist is giving. So for a fresh start, controller wins. On the long run, I was gonna say give it an even 50-50, but with the current state of Warzone and how the long range fights are, mouse and keyboard is not having any sort of advantage. So controller is actually still a good option, especially with aim assist being effective at most of the fights. And you're gonna hear a lot about bots sitting in a corner, and because of aim assist, they managed to get a kill. But you'll never hear that happening for a mouse and keyboard player where he magically tracked all the time without missing a single bullet. And since we're human, mouse and keyboard players will tend to make some natural mistakes and corrections here and there. Controller players with aim assist won't have to go through that at all or at a very minimal rate. So with that being said, one point for controller. And just remember, if you go on YouTube right now and search up for how many videos there is of switching from controller to mouse and keyboard versus switching from mouse and keyboard to controller, and how each one performed where if you went from controller to mouse and keyboard they got some nice clips some improvements after a while but look at how many people went from mouse and keyboard to controller and broke their pr in a week or two and managed to do things that they never thought was possible on mouse and keyboard or they have to be masters at it with that being said i'm not gonna give a point here but this is just more of a reinforcement on the previous point now for a topic that has no name which is is the thumb actually limiting if you think about it some people might say that you only have to control your thumb at the whole time, so all the different functions that have to go through your brain and nervous system are being handled with one muscle that's being used every single time. As for your mouse and keyboard player, well, it's different because you might be a wrist player, so it's the same logic as a thumb player. One thing is moving at a time, but you might be an arm player and you have to move two to three parts at the same time. But this will also cause fatigue. Uh, wrist only will cause inaccuracy because you're playing on high sense. There's so many different factors. With that being said, the thumb versus whole arm thing is neither scientifically, biologically, or even nervously correct. Is that a word? Nervous? Whatever. You get my point. There's no point of comparing them as it's very situational and it goes down to the skill. 
Once you see very good mouse and keyboard players going up versus very good controller players, they're both hitting their shots, whether they're using the whole arm or knowing how to use the thumb. It's just muscle memory. So what do you guys think of this comparison? Was it scientific enough and it covered all the points or am I missing something here? And guys, I have a small favor to ask. If you see this video or anything before it, I'm always trying to bring some value and something different for the Call of Duty community. Because to be honest, when compared to other FPS communities like CSGO or Valorant, we are mostly toxic and not a lot of truth or skill to our community. So with that being said, I'm here to change things. I don't want to be just the guy complaining about negative stuff. I want to complain, but also find a solution or help with it. And with that being said, a like and a sub would be highly appreciated. As for the conclusion, well, it's obvious that controllers are way better as an input for Warzone 2 instead of mouse and keyboard. Sadly, Call of Duty cares about weapon balancing and time to kill, but not about input balance. But like I said, I like to offer solutions, so Activision, if you're listening, I got two ideas for you. The first one is to bring things back as they were in Warzone 1, you already have the data, you can copy and paste, and I'm pretty sure you love doing that because you guys are lazy as lazy you're very lazy option number two if you don't want to remove aim assist add an input delay to it so it only activates after you move but also after your crosshair is hitting the target once it's there it sticks for a while and then it's turned off that way it's helping you initially but at the same time it needs some skill where you need to aim at the target and keep your crosshair on it for at least a bit and if you guys have some good solutions write them down in the comments you never know maybe they do listen